All right, welcome back to another episode of our Guild Wars One Pro. Almost said prophecies again. Guild Wars One actions playthrough. Uh, I kept messing up the intro. Anyway, uh, we just finished our Sunjiang District mission, and actually, you notice I'm in Jinku Corridor because I want to do something different. I am going to continue through the pro uh, faction storyline, but I want to go back through here because there's a Mesmer construct, and I kind of want to capture his skill. And quite possibly, uh, if we can see if we can farm him, it, and take its green item if he drops one. I'm pretty sure he does. First, I need to find out where he is. I think he's in this southwestern area. It might be too difficult to use our noob, our noob proof farming uh, strategy that we used for in another episode. But if we can pull it off, that would be awesome switched over to a um, energy surge build the uh, keystone build I was using last episode was not bad it was just not not optimal enough I think it was kind of annoying not doing any damage and yeah I think there is a time and a place to use a keystone build however but not my style right now we're going tried and true. Trusted. Okay, I got that. Got that off. Um, e surge. Going with the e surge again. Very strong. Look at that damage. You just can't, can't beat it. There's a monk construct. We're after the mesmer construct, wherever it is. Where is it at? Uh... Hmm. Yeah, I think it's just over here somewhere. Maybe a little bit farther down. I'm going to do some exploring. Exploring's fun anyway. We put empathy on these warriors. I think we're running a little closer. Could have, oh, I did bring. I brought the monk. I can take a look at what this monk has also. Oh, his life, seat, life sheath. That's not bad. What is hurting us so bad? Oof. The uh, Ele Shiroken Elementalists have Starburst. This is a very strong uh, point blank fire skill. Trying to get a lucky power spike on his uh, his protection spells. Not really working too well. Oh, this assassin still alive. Go. Then we're seeing. Oh, that's a ranger. Like, how is that assassin still alive? Usually they're the first to go. Mesmer's construct. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit tough to farm, maybe. I come up here. Oh, he's over. Yeah, this is going to be really tough to farm. There's so many enemies. How do I get down there? Maybe we can just get like a super lucky green drop. That would be awesome. Full party. Monk. You go first. That's my... Oh, going down fast. Okay, the Mesmer, okay, assassin's gone. Ooh, that's always nice, getting a rune. 
We got what do we got? Domination one. Okay, not bad. I think that's worth some money actually. Whoops. Keep attacking us. Assassin. Empathy for you. Monk, you go first. get this skill i think it's some sort of interrupting skill which will be pretty fun to use maybe if you don't fail too badly need to fight a little bit that's just way too many enemies come on oh i aggroed all of them back up a little bit I think I can just AoE burst them really quick. I don't know if this is gonna work. That's a lot of enemies. <laughs> That's just way too many. get some damage thin them out and we'll come back okay we're back here I aggroed them a little bit it was much better I split them up I just needed a back pedal as soon as the the warrior and assassin kept running at me now it should be doable See if I can get just the Mesmer by itself. That would be excellent. Okay. Pull them back a little bit again. Nice. Get just this hero again. Yeah, look at you hear all the interrupts going off. It's craziness. No, don't take out the mesmer construct yet. Oh, back up, back up, back up. Ah, we already got it. Darn. No drop. Oh well, let's just get it. Psychic distraction. All of your other skills are disabled for eight seconds. If target foe is using a skill. That skill is interrupted and disabled for an additional 12 seconds. Um, that's not great, is it? It has a really short cooldown, though. All of your other skills are disabled. The idea is just to run... ...this... ...and... ...huh. This is gonna be interesting, running this skill. Doesn't do any damage, but it's it's essentially just for shutting down. And it's not just abilities, it's all skills. Why not just use blackout though? If you're gonna use this, just use blackout and it does the same thing and it's guaranteed. But I guess this is ranged. Hmm. That's interesting. Anyway, we'll try it. Let's go back to Soon Jiang, turn in this quest. So if I'm going to be running this, the other skills I use will look something like this, I guess. Yeah, that's not a bad skill bar. The idea is I'm going to mind rack and then I'm going to spam psychic distraction and get rid of all of their skills. We'll see. I suddenly, I think this is not a good ability at all. We'll try it. Alright, turn this in. We have reinforced this area, but I do not know how long we can uh, hold. 
With each body we can buy you a chance to stop Shiro. I'm starting to think the stench down here is never going to leave my nostrils. Where do we go now? Oh, uh, yeah, where do I go next? To go to Matu Keep first. Here we go. Jamie. She's the one I can talk to. So I can, okay, here's where I choose. Journey to House of Helser or Journey to Cavalon. We're going with the Lux Suns. So Journey to Cavalon it is. Gotta go to Eldorea, talk to Bensis. So I was right about that. I'll seek out Eldorea. Wait, now we can do it. I was jumping ahead of myself. Uh, Watchman Bensis. You and Master Toga wish to become Luxons, do you? Well, I suggest that you consult. I'll have old Clampy and Pinchy here get out the way. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So many warnings. Eldorea. Welcome to Cavalon. Wow, that was an easy 4,000 experience for doing nothing. Alright, so now... This is where I need to befriend the Luxons. I have to get 10,000 unspent faction points? Are you kidding me? I've got 3,250, so... Yeah, I gotta get just under 7,000 more. Um, but how do we do it? I can do Fort Aspenwood. Um, but this is a PvP quest, I believe. Isn't it? Or I can do Jade Quarry. Let's just see what we do. What these quests do for us. I think the other thing we do is go to Zoshivros and we just run that challenge mission. Get some faction points that way. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. I'm going to do some challenge missions. I want to get up to... Uh, where are we at? We need to get 7,000. Let's just see how many we can get through this. Ooh, we got new henchmen. Healer, spirit, protection. Triple healer. And we'll go interrupt. Even though we're an interrupt, so I'll go with... I wonder what's the difference between Aurora... Go interrupt. There's like three rangers. Oh, Daemon. That was the guy we fought in in the last place. Yeah, we get Argo. All of these people we fought in um the Boria Seabed, didn't we? Oh. Looks pretty good. Instead of him, I'm gonna go with Hmm. I think Aurora is the barrage ranger. It might be good, some good AOE. All right, let's try this challenge. Well, the idea here is, oh, it doesn't tell us what to do. So I use my powers to summon hostile creatures from afar. These creatures are en enraged at being summoned and they seek to kill me. All you have to do is keep me alive for as long as you can. Oh, so it's to defend the NPC. Who's Hector? Oh, Hector's a... Okay. We got a little crab teammate. Pretty cool. So he's dancing. That's how he summons the enemies here. I think these adapts... Give us some extra faction as well. Or they increase the time, maybe. It's been a while since I've done this. Very cool. Very cool map design. Corey Lux and Adepts to receive a morale boost and score bonus. Okay, so that's just for bonus. We don't have to do it. The morale boost might be nice, though. Let's keep the high ground. The 
Cure list. That's who I'm going to target because I have this Psychic Distraction spell. I can just keep interrupting. Oh, this is perfect for me, actually. I can, it's so... It's such a fast cast. Even a human can do it. That's kind of fun. Just spamming this. Totally shuts them down. I can cast. There we go. I should probably start with Chaos Storm and then I can start interrupting. actually psychic distraction it's kind of like blackout but you have to you have to um, disable one skill at a time but we get to do it from range so that's pretty cool oh what are we up in the faction yeah we've already gotten almost a hundred faction Problem with this is, I mean, the, the good news and bad news with this build is you only need one ability, basically. I should cast the stuff I want to cast first before I start spamming it. Oh, here we go. And I'm hoping, depending on the score... Oh, look at that high score. We're at score four today. His high score is 8,343. What is that? That's insane. We get five extra points for each wave. We get, yeah, look at that 50 faction bonus. So this is the fastest way to get 10,000 faction, I think, for, um, yeah, single play or solo playing. He's probably speeding us up. I'm sure that crazy score just comes from people totally optimizing their heroes and uh, mercenaries and stuff and just essentially playing this 24 hours straight. Because this the counter just keeps going up. I think you can just stay in this mission forever. I mean, 8,000, that's crazy. And that's just today. People are running it that high in a single day. Oh, we've got new enemies. Oh, that one was too fast. Oh, that's too fast. All right. Change of plans. I mean, it's not too bad. Definitely ranged um, is the way to go. Oops. That eight second self uh, disablement is pretty bad. Again, I think, I, I really think blackout is probably better for freeing up an elite skill slot. And then running a, something like illusionary weaponry, you're doing DPS and shutting down. Same effect. Oh, couldn't even disable that. Yeah, and if you if you miss an interrupt, it's just brutal. Officially, I hate this skill. <laughs> it's official. Yeah, I just accidentally I accidentally pressed it and I 
paying the price there. There's probably a time and a place for it. I mean, it would be... Uh, I'm sure a hero would make excellent usage of it. I feel like they should buff it to where if you don't successfully interrupt, it doesn't just like it, it should only disable my skills if I successfully interrupt. That's the better way to do it in my opinion. Looks like we lost this already. Ooh, it's getting tougher. Now I essentially just don't have an, an elite skill because I don't want to use it. I don't want to mess up my skill bar. There you go. That's some big damage. What are we at now? We've gotten about 250 factions since we started this, or 300 faction rather. Oh, they're behind us now. Trying to aggro them. There we go. Ah, oh, I was out of energy. I couldn't. Oh. Not able to get any interrupts now. They're doing all right, though. I mean, my my henchmen are doing all the heavy lifting here. Wave three is already about to begin. Oh. It doesn't really let up. If you take too long to defeat the enemies, you're gonna get overrun eventually, I guess. Nice, that was wave two. Yeah, this is pretty good. I think not going any melee henchmen was the way to go for this mission. Look at that. And we're fighting real monsters. Alright, I think it's gonna... I think Black Extraction is gonna come in handy here. I preemptively used it. I always do that. That Leviathan Eye looks kind of like the enemies in Guild Wars 2, the cha Chakra or whatever. Remember what I'm talking about? I'm not going to be able to interrupt Power Drain. You kidding me? It's too fast. Back up here. Adepts are now worth 12 points. Ah, so you don't want to take out the Adepts too soon. The claws are warriors. They look like big lobsters, huh? Got it. I mean, the good news is that this is spammable, and you get that 25 extra damage every time I cast this enemy on it, and they lose one energy every time I cast it, so. Having a spammable skill is pretty good, too. Oh, behind us.
think this might be it. Can we survive? Yes. We're good, we're good. The warriors don't really do anything. We have tons of healing. Whoops. I keep half fingering it. I mean, really, this this mission is just about having a good team. Doesn't really matter what we have, I guess. Just these spirits, like Aegis and everything, it's all making us pretty unkillable. And there's no real bosses going on. Put empathy up on these guys. Oh, they're targeting me now. We're getting overrun now. Yikes. Ah, I'm so late with it. Passing Chaos Storm point blank on these warriors is pretty good because it might keep might make them run away. Would have been good to go the uh, arcane echo and the double uh, or triple with echo the uh, triple chaos storm build that I was using a while back just cast as many chaos storms as possible look 750 action we got from this what is Kalibos he's going crazy over here Alt spray dragon, kraken spawns, naga. They're starting to get more mixed, the uh, enemies. It's 56. I still can't look at the difference. My score and today's high score. It must have, you must have spent hours in this mission. It's a little bit too much. I bet that's 24 hours straight. Oh, I interrupted it. Nice. Ride the Lightning is pretty damaging spell. Let's back up a little bit here. Oh, the Oni are here now? I think this is it. They do way too much damage. Yeah, look at that damage. 70, 80, 50. Got to burst down the Oni. They're going to be most important to take out. Oh, I totally interrupted that. Are you kidding me? Oni first. Oh, I thought that was a boss over there. Interrupts are definitely very good for this mission. Only.
be nice if I can get an interrupt on that jagged strike and he would lose his combos Is this it? We're losing Hector. We lost Hector. Oh, we lost. We lost. The AoE. The AoE is too much. Oh, the priest lost. Alright, so we got... Yeah, almost a thousand faction from that, and it took how long? It took almost 10 minutes. A thousand faction per minute. This is gonna take like over an hour to get this faction. Okay, so that's one way to get the faction points, I guess. So I'll show some other ways also. I think. I'm gonna go grab some henchmen. All the henchmen seem pretty good, so I don't even really care which ones we get, really. Try the guardian henchmen. Yeah. And I am not gonna run psychic distraction anymore. I think it's probably a pretty good skill in the niche build. It's just, yeah, not the most fun build in the world. I'm going to go back to one of my favorites and go ahead and run, level up our pet tiger a little bit more. Let's get beast, beast out. Could really just save a template for this illusionary weapon rebuild that I'm running. But that would require being smart <laughs> and uh, kills one. And then the other ones don't really matter. That and go ahead. Have one more healing skill. There we go. All right, so we're going to go to Fort Aspenwood. And on the way, I'm hoping there's some quests I can pick up in these explorable areas. And if we get lucky, we can capture some more Mesmer skills. Kind of multiple birds with multiple stones here. Um, I think... Yeah. So in factions, at all of these shrines, you can pay some money. And you can get some blessings, I realize. Mesmer attributes by one. That's pretty sweet. Assassin. Want that. Nexus cast on you. 20% sooner. 2% morale boost. 10 energy. Okay, obviously we're going to get this one. Oh, I need to change to my... There we go. I was like, why is that so low? Wow, 44 damage per attack. That's awesome. I thought there would be some quests here. Hmm. I, I was also hoping like in Nightfall, whenever you need to get faction points, there's someone to talk to here. Maybe I just need to talk to these people. Talk to the priest. Yeah, here we go. What did you be interested in a blessing? So the blessing of the Luxons, which give you 25 maximum health. This will cost you 100 gold to receive this. That's cool. And we get hunk that's what I was looking for. You get Luxon faction for hunting in this area, and boss creatures provide bonus faction. So this is another way to farm Luxon faction. Honestly, it's probably a little bit more fun than that challenge mission we were just doing. That's fun. Multiple ways to get faction. 
Oh, I forgot the cast illusionary weapon. I just went straight into bestial fury. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Get him, tiger. Look at that damage. 88 damage a second. That's some insane damage. 10 faction per kill. Okay, this is better than the challenge mission. Unless I'm mistaken. And there's always the chance for some good drops. And the chance for some captured skills. This is going to be better. And it's exploring. Challenge mission is a fine way to get it, but honestly a little bit boring in my opinion. Here's our first boss. Jeffer, the pain bringer. Keep sympathetic visage. I like this Seaguard Eli. He's kind of cool looking. Let me get an up close look at him. Oof, that low skill is pretty brutal for me. We're pretty strong though. We got plus one to all Mesmer attributes. So I'm going to end up whopping 17 illusion plus 25 health. I wonder if that blessing applies to my party members as well. Doesn't apply to my tiger. Probably not because if I had player characters with me, they would have to each pay for their own blessing. So I'm guessing it doesn't extend to my henchmen. So 100 gold for the Lux and, hen and 50 for this uh, other pretty good oh, inventory full story of my life full inventory salvage some stuff it's all of these collector items honestly ooh eight glittering dust from jade longbow gotta remember that so we're at four over four almost 4.5k oh okay almost out of range to resurrect my tiger there in addition to these like bounties where you get kill you get faction per kill i think there's some like repeatable quests I remember there being repeatable quests on the Kurzik side, so I imagine there's some on the Luxon side. And we came here for Boreas Seabed mission. Right? Yeah. It's interesting because some of the missions in factions, the mission areas share locations with the explorable areas. I guess pretty much all of them do. Only in fact, only in prophecies, I believe, are the mission areas and the explorable areas separate from each other. I imagine the developers realized making prophecies, they probably figured out some more efficient ways to uh, have their, uh, to save their time in making the game. They probably learned a lot from making uh, prophecies, actually. A cool little shrine over here. Oof. I don't know what just did 103 damage. That was crazy. What was that damage that I did? Oh, that was clumsiness. Yeah, clumsiness, 103 damage and they're interrupted. That's an excellent ability. My little tiger is doing about 7 damage per hit. It's not nothing. And he's only level 10, so that's just going to go up once he gets to level 20. What's this collector here? Root Wallow Tusk. I think I have a bunch of these, don't I? Maybe? Oh, maybe not. Need 4 more. Butterfly Knives, Drool Chakram. That's a nice illusion magic, Chakram. 
But we have a shield, so no thanks. Where is this place? Oh, that was it? Mount Kinkai. I'm not too worried about wasting money. I know I did spend money on these blessings, but I'm going to go ahead and do some more exploring. What are we at now? We're at like, yeah, we're over 4.5 now. That was a couple hundred action point we just got there. Alpha mini. Sell some stuff. I sell here. I got so many collectible items. Sell the ones that I'm not using anymore. Is there anything interesting here? There's a weapons vendor. I guess it's just an in-between outpost. Oh no, this is an this is an explorable area. I thought it was an outpost because of this, the NPCs. I don't think I've ever been here. Mount Inkai. Wow. I mean, there'd be no reason to come over here if you're just focusing on missions. Awesome looking. Waterfall area. Home of the Naga. It reminds me of the, um, the, uh, Shinje Island. Oh, I, I missed the shrine. No, let me let me fast forward. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no shrine in this one for me to get. Morning. I thought I must have missed the Luxon priest, but it wasn't one. Wow, I can't believe it. Yeah, I definitely have never been in this area. Yet again, the developers made these totally optional areas, and I mean, look at the level design of this place. It looks great. I have a big group here. Weaken knees. Didn't get a chance to see what that does. There's a shrine. Um, but... Weaken knees. Three set, three health to generation and takes nine damage while moving. That's good for PvP, I imagine. Dealing with runners. Nine damage, that's not really that much. I wonder why there's no Luxon people here. Let me do a... Hundred fifty gold though. Kind of a lot. Let's get, uh... Get this one. X is in 20% sooner. Now we're like those worms with natural resistance. Fast, fast hex removal. Level 11 for our tiger. The quest out here, Magistrate Kin. Let's see if this gives any lux in um, action. It doesn't, that's... Okay, Lux and Totem, thousand Lux and Faction. These are good ways to get faction as well. Let's do one. Uh, please register and find Arash Mountain Club and retrieve the Golden Lantern. You can do that. Let's talk to a Lux and oh, is that not a Lux and Priest? Where's it at? Back that way. There's a priest. 
let's go ahead and get this um who's aspen woodgate go ahead and get the uh blessing from luxons and then we'll go do this quest I don't know why they didn't put a Luxon Priest on that end of the map. Kind of wasted time. Yeah, let's go ahead. Now we actually kind of want to fight because we get this. Um... Oh, you interrupted my illusion of weakness. You're going to pay for that. Oh, I forgot to do illusionary weaponry. <laughs> uh, this is a pretty fun build, but... I need to remember to push the buttons in the right order. And I feel like I have to say this every time. Yes, I know Beastial Fury is a terrible skill, but it's the only ranger, it's the only ranger uh, attack speed increase that I have at the moment. So if you comment saying, why are you using that skill? I know that you didn't watch the video. Bone staffs, I definitely want to pick up. They're really good for materials. 11 bones. That's like at least 300 gold right there. Where are we going? Going up the mountain. Let's read the description. Find and defeat Arash Mountain Club. Retrieve a golden lantern. So it's a sacred golden lantern that is missing. Sounds like a big monster. Possibly a uh, giant. What are they? What are the giants called in factions? Yetis. Now let's fight these guys. I mean, it's 40, 40 Luxon variant or faction right there. I think, what are they fighting up there? Oh, they don't like each other. They're attacking the spirit. Get him, tiger. I still haven't thought of a name for my tiger, so. Do you have any, do you have any uh, recommendations? Let me know. I kind of wish Sympathetic Visage would not just be hit by melee attacks but at melee range i think that would be a nice compromise so if i run up close to a ranger or something it'll still proc that i think that's fair all the jade daggers look cool hey look at that weapon skin yeah those look really cool nice weapon design there Can we get some jade from them? Nope, just wood planks. Alright, almost there. This is gonna be good. This is a thousand Luxon faction, three thousand experience. And then whatever the Luxon totem is, that's probably a collectible that we can use to get some equipment or uh, at least some, what do you call it? Kits, salvage kits and stuff. one thing that factions introduced it wasn't in prophecies where um you have these kind of collectible quest items that you can use to get various trophies and rewards as i was talking in the comments with Tar Heel, they really they started to give some instead of like general rewards rather than having to make like profession specific rewards for each quest i can kind of understand why they did that it's it, it would be very tedious to give a specific reward based on each individual profession but making these currencies like lux and totems or commendations it um it makes it a little bit more 
uh, what do you call it? flexible. I see, I see why they did it. I just liked in in factions. I liked the attention to detail that they did for the for the quests, and they made certain that that's what made certain quests more valuable than others. With these general generalized rewards, it's like basically there is no incentive to do the more difficult quests because the reward, rewards are going to be basically the same, except for like some experience differences or gold differences. But there's a golden lantern. But there's always trade-offs to those kind of things. I was about to salvage it. Uh, where'd the Yeti plating go? There we go. Inga oh, we get iron for the, from the Yetis. I need to make sure. I need to always double check to make sure illusionary weaponry is on before I use bestial fury. Ukra, Earth so. Yeah, we've gotten six hundred. Luxon points since our last uh, Luxon blessing. This is this is way faster than just farming the challenge, challenge mission. So I'm gonna loop back around, clean out all these yetis. We got a yeti problem in these mountains. Nice, we got a rune. Battle Arts 1. Trapper's Focus is a pretty nice ranger skill. What does that do? Why can't I use it? Oh, it's not a boss. What am I doing? All right, let's go turn this back in. So after we turn this quest in, we'll have a whopping 6,000-ish uh, action. It's not too bad. 10,000 sounds like a lot, but it's really not that bad. And it gives, in I like it because it gives incentive to interact with the various quests. That's one of the complaints that I had early on in factions is, yeah, well, what's the point of having these side quests, but At first, it'll it'll make you think, "Oh man, how am I supposed to? What a waste of time farming this ten thousand faction!" But it encourages players to play the game in different ways. It also adds a level of allegiance to the faction. And I don't remember if they still do it, but whenever you um, whenever you cash in your faction for rewards, I believe it removes faction from the opposite side. So that you can't play both sides as easily. I might be wrong about that. <laughs> might be able to test that out. Yeah, because it wouldn't really make sense if you're like able to just flip flop, turn coat between the two factions so easily. Very cool level design and architecture. All right, Magistrate Kin. This was a pretty easy quest. Hopefully there's some more we can come across. Again, I've never even been in this area, so that's pretty crazy. Uh, okay, Thousand Faction. And we got a Luxon Totem. Where is that at? Right here. We can use that to cash in for rewards somewhere. Let's go to Fort Aspenwood. Let's see what this is all about. On here. Where's Jade Quarry then? Oh, Jade Quarry's back over that way. I think by just coming here, we get another 3,000 experience and 250 gold. That at least covers the blessings that we're paying for. What's this collector have? Stolen provisions. I've never even found... Stolen provisions. Who carries stolen provisions? 
Gazing Scepter. Ooh, that's a nice domination wand. And that's pretty good. Except the the energy below 50%. I don't really like that. Okay, Fort Aspenwood. Merchants. Oh, this is the Lux inside. What's this then? Why are there two outpost portals? Is it the PvP? This might be the PvP section. Yeah, this is the PvP area. I don't think since since we're not a lot. Okay, we can pay. Raise alliance reputation. We're not going to pay yet because we need 10,000 to show. We need 10,000 faction to show to the uh, person. But we can come here and we can uh, unlock some bonuses. All right, so this quest was just, just to encourage players to get here. Obviously, there's no player, so we can't do it right now. But I think this would be another way to get lots of faction points. Okay, let's go back to those Shivros. Yeah, so far in this in this episode, we showed um, how to gain faction points pretty easily. The probably the no brain turn off your brain strategy would be just to farm this challenge mission over and over and over. Not a bad strategy. If you want to play the game a little bit more, the other option would be what we just did. You go to the explore, explorable area, you talk to the Luxon priest, and then you get a bounty where you just go around fighting enemies and uh, come across various quests to get some faction. So I'm going to stop the video here. I'm not going to let you're not going to have to watch me farm all the way up to 10,000 faction. Uh, or I might just yeah, I might separate this into two videos. Uh, but anyway, the next time you see me, I'll probably have close to 10,000 faction. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to be getting closer to befriending the fa uh, Luxon so we can get to the next section of the missions of our factions playthrough. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helped you if or, or inspired some nostalgia. That's the main purpose of this playthrough. So make players come back to this awesome game. Anyway, catch you later. Bye.